regardless of what the Fed is saying about a strong economy, their fight against inflation will put this strong economy into recession if it's not already in recession. And in fact, if it is in a recession, the Fed is committed to making the recession worse in order to fight inflation. Now, what the markets still don't know, and that's why the yield curve is inverting and you're not seeing a bigger backup in long-term yields, is the markets assume the Fed is gonna be successful in its fight against inflation, either because it succeeds on its own with the rate hikes or the recession ends up doing the Fed's job for it. The Fed puts the economy in recession and then it's the recession that kills inflation. So either way, the markets think inflation is going away, but the markets are wrong on both fronts. These rate hikes are not gonna be sufficient to get rid of inflation. We still have negative interest rates and the Fed isn't even gonna come close to getting rates to neutral, let alone positive real rates that would be required to actually fight inflation. And at some point, the economy is going to be so weak that FOMC members are not going to be able to pretend that it's strong. They're not going to be able to shrug off all the evidence of a severe recession. And we are going to get the pivot. I mean, they're going to keep up the pretense and the bluff as long as they can. But ultimately, they're going to have to show their cards. They're going to pivot as best they can. And the markets are going to react, probably not the way most people think, but we will get a severe reaction in the foreign currency markets and in the gold market. Also, one of the interesting things about all the Fed governor's commitment to reducing inflation is they're all committed to bringing the rate back down to 2%. Now, nobody is calling anybody out on the hypocrisy of this because not too long ago, when the Fed first indicated that it would tolerate inflation above 2%, the reason it claimed it was willing to do that was because it now had a new goal of inflation averaging, meaning that instead of having a 2% target year over year, they now had a 2% average target, meaning that if you have several years of inflation below 2%, the Fed needs to have inflation above 2% to make up for that. Now, at the time when Powell announced this ridiculous target, I pointed out just how ridiculous it was by speaking about the very reason that the Fed had a 2% inflation target in the first place. The Fed initially told us that the reason they needed 2% inflation was to make sure there was enough distance between the inflation rate and zero, because apparently, according to the Fed, the worst thing that can happen is that prices come down. And so they needed to have a big enough buffer between zero and the inflation rate just to take out an insurance policy against falling prices. Well, if you had several years where inflation was below 2%, but still above zero, well, you dodge that bullet supposedly. There's no reason to make up for some loss of inflation not being 2% in some future year by having inflation be above 2%. Just the fact that we didn't have deflation, prices rose, but they didn't fall, that's a win. Now we could go forward. I pointed out it was nonsense to say we have to pay some kind of penalty. We have to make up for the fact that the cost of living didn't rise by enough in a particular year that now we have to have an even greater increase in the cost of living in a later year. But I also pointed out at that time the exact position that the Fed is now in that what happens if inflation really spikes up well above 2%, how do you average it back down to 2%? Well, that would require the Fed having many years of inflation below 2% in order to make up for those years that it's above 2%. Well, is anybody at the FOMC acknowledging the fact that we need to have inflation below 2% for a while to make up for 9% inflation? In fact, how many years is the inflation rate going to be well above 2%? And how many years would they have to get inflation below 2% in order for it to average 2%? In fact, if prices are already too high, making them go up by another 2% would just add insult to injury. I mean, wouldn't it be good if we got some relief from these high prices? Would it be so terrible if after rising so much for a couple of years that prices dropped a little bit? Well, according to the Fed, no, it doesn't matter how much prices go up, they can never come down. 
they have to go up again no matter what. That supposedly is a victory over inflation. If we have maybe 10% inflation two or three years in a row, if the Fed could just make the fourth year 2%, somehow that's a victory. Forget about the huge increases before that, as long as they eventually get the increase to only be 2%, they've won. Now, nobody on the FOMC is talking about inflation averaging now. But what's more important is that no one in the media is holding anybody on the Fed accountable. Why not ask Powell? Why not at one of these press conferences? Oh, excuse me, Chair Powell, uh, what happened to the concept of inflation averaging? You were talking about the need to have average inflation of 2% when it was below 2%. And so you said we needed to have inflation above 2% to kind of average out the years when it was below 2%. Well, if that's the Fed's policy, why not stick to it? Don't we need to have many years below 2% to make up for all these years above 2%? Or is there really no policy? Are you just making this up as you go along? Is it heads the Fed wins, tails the country loses when it comes to inflation? We only want to average up low inflation, but we never want to average down high inflation. And also on inflation, I'm hearing a lot more myths about inflation. And one of the big myths is the so-called trade-off that you have between inflation and employment and inflation and economic growth. A lot of people are saying that we need to have an increase in unemployment in order to have a reduction in inflation. This is the so-called Phillips curve, which believes that there's some kind of inverse relationship between the two. But this is false. It is Keynesian nonsense. Forcing people out of productive jobs does not fight inflation. The Keynesians are focused on demand. They think if people lose their jobs, they won't have any purchasing power. They won't be able to buy stuff and so they'll have less demand. As if inflation is somehow a byproduct of people working and people spending their paychecks. It's not. Again, the public doesn't cause inflation. Workers don't cause inflation because they have jobs. And taking away their jobs won't take away inflation. In fact, if anything, having more people productively employed helps to reduce prices. Because when people are employed productively, they are increasing economic output. They are adding to supply. You have greater supply of goods and services, which reflect the output of people working. And when you have more supply, that puts downward pressure on prices. So even if the government is inflating the money supply, putting upward pressure on prices, the free market can offset that by increasing the supply of goods and services. But when people lose their jobs, the supply of goods and services is going to be reduced and that is going to make inflation worse. You know, the same thing is true with respect to the supposed trade-off between economic growth and inflation. People are saying the Fed has to slow down the economy. We need less economic growth to have lower inflation. Again, that is trying to put the blame for inflation on the private sector. The economy is just growing too fast and that's why we have inflation. No, it's the money supply that's growing too fast. The government is why we have inflation, not the private sector. Economic growth doesn't cause inflation. Again, the opposite. Economic growth can offset the impact of inflation by lowering prices. Again, what does real economic growth do? It means more output. It means the supply of goods and services is increasing and that puts downward pressure on prices. So if the economy slows down and it is less productive and the supply of goods and services is not growing as fast or maybe even contracts, that makes the inflation problem worse in that you have added upward pressure on consumer prices. Now, the reality is if the Fed is going to fight inflation successfully, you're going to have a big increase in unemployment and you're going to have a bad recession. But that doesn't mean it's the increase in unemployment and the recession that is responsible for the successful fight on inflation. It's not. Those things in and of themselves are not what's driving inflation lower. It's the Fed's inflation battle that is driving inflation lower, but is also driving 
economic growth lower and unemployment higher, but it doesn't mean those things are related. And the reason the Fed's inflation fight is going to cause a recession and cause a lot of people to lose their jobs is because we haven't had real economic growth. We have had a bubble. What has been the source of the bubble? Inflation. The Fed has inflated a massive bubble. It has kept interest rates artificially low. It has printed too much money. And so we've had a bubble instead of real economic growth. And we've had a lot of jobs that were created in companies that are not viable. Zombie companies that are only alive because the Fed's inflationary monetary policy has keeping them alive.